writers, I don't know about you, but when I write for really long periods of time, like for NaNoWriMo, I used to get really bad neck and shoulder pain, but not anymore. Do you ever experience similar pain or maybe different pain like in your back or your wrist or your knuckles? Let me know in the comments because thankfully I'm married to my wonderful husband, Ben, who is a physical therapist. And after working with him to set up my writing space for optimal posture and learning some helpful exercises, I really don't experience pain anymore. With NaNoWriMo right around the corner, I knew we'd all be sitting at our desks for long periods of time. So I thought it'd be really cool to have Ben help me make a video that you can use to help optimize your writing space like I did. And Ben will also share a few really great exercises to prevent varying kinds of pain, neck, shoulder, back, hands. So feel free to save this video to a personal writing video playlist so you can reference and go through the exercises anytime you want during your writing breaks. Also, Ben actually has his own YouTube channel, which I'll let him tell you a little bit about right now. Hey everybody, as Brittany just mentioned, uh, I'm actually a licensed physical therapist and I actually have my own YouTube channel, Dr. Ben PT, um, and I've been making those videos to help people with their physical wellness. When we talk about NaNoWriMo, we don't always talk about self-care, but it's so important. So if you like, you can check out Ben's channel in the description below and let's get into the tips. First, we set up my writing space so that it would discourage slouching and make it easier to sit with good posture. Sitting this way helps to decrease the stress going through your joints and muscles and the likelihood of pain occurring even before it starts. First, you want to make sure that you have a good chair height and that your hips and knees are both at 90 degree angles so that your feet rest flat on the floor. However, you may find that sitting in this position makes it so that your arms are resting up on your desk in an uncomfortable position. If this is the case, you have two options. One, get a new chair or a new desk. Or two, you want to raise your seat height up so that when your arms rest on your desk, your shoulders aren't pushed up into your ears. For me, when we brought my chair high enough, my feet weren't quite hitting the floor, so I simply put something under my feet so my knees would still be at a 90 degree angle. You also wanna make sure that you are at the appropriate distance from your desk. If you're too far, you're going to be constantly reaching forward with your arms. Also, you're going to keep moving your head forward, which will probably cause you some neck pain after a while. Ideally, you want to have your chair positioned close enough so that you're able to rest your forearms on your desk with your shoulders relaxed, keeping your elbows at about a 90 degree angle. This will involve playing around with the height and distance of your chair. An easy way to prevent yourself from slouching is actually to put a rolled up towel vertically behind your upper back at a thickness that keeps you sitting straight. This is also helpful in preventing shoulder pain and mid to upper back pain. If you're experiencing low back pain while you're sitting, one common reason is because of over slouching. One way to prevent this is to use a rolled up towel horizontally this time behind your lower back. You can adjust the thickness to your desired comfort by rolling it only part way. Another thing to look at is the height of your computer screen. If you're constantly looking down, you're probably gonna end up with a sore neck after a while. Ideally, you wanna be able to keep your head looking straight ahead. This was one of my issues because I work on a laptop. So what we decided to do is purchase a Bluetooth keyboard so my arms could still stay level with the desk and then I also bought this laptop stand to raise my screen. You can also use a sturdy box or two or some books under your laptop to raise the height. And I did start out with this option, but I got a bit nervous that my laptop would just fall off. If you'd like to check out the keyboard and the stand I purchased, I'll link those in the description below. Ben also showed me a few easy exercises to do periodically while I'm in a writing session to prevent my pain from starting up. All right, guys, the first exercise we have is what we call the chin tuck. Um, this is going to help you guys prevent uh, any neck pain or shoulder pain uh, from acting up. So uh, we're going to have Brittany actually do this uh, while I direct her. Um, so we'll kind of show a frontal view and then possibly a side view too. An easy way to think about this is to actually place your fingers on your chin and then just push back so that your head goes straight back. You don't want to tuck your chin down or even look up. Your eyes should be focused completely straight. Like you have a double chin, right? Exactly. <laughs> I don't like this one, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> Good. 
So there she is doing a couple times. And as you do it, you wanna just hold it for about five to 10 seconds. Good. And as you can see, she's not looking down or looking up, she's just moving her head straight back. Good, and do you wanna turn sideways so they can see? And this kind of thing they can do while they're just sitting. Perfect, you can see right there how her head moves back, and as she moves her head back, it's actually more in line with the rest of her shoulder and her body there. Perfect. Okay, moving on to the second exercise is a shoulder blade squeeze, or you might hear them called scap pinches by other physical therapists, um, which is also going to help you with some neck and shoulder pain. It's a really great stretch to do in the midst of your writing. Um, so the important part here is actually cross your fingers together and place them on your stomach. Um, this makes sure that you don't move your elbows back and stress your shoulder too much. So as your hands are resting on your stomach, you're going to draw your shoulder blades back and pinch them together. One helpful tip is if you think about a pencil or a pen uh, that's in the middle of your back and you're trying to pinch it with your shoulder blades. So you can see as Brittany holds that, her shoulders are moving back. Um, and as you hold it, you're gonna start to feel the muscles in your back really contracting. Go ahead and relax and do that a couple more times. Good. Another way to kind of think about this is if you imagine a string from your chest and it's pulling you up and forward, that's going to, again, address your posture and make sure that you're using all those muscles to help you sit upright. If you're experiencing any kind of wrist, hand, finger, or knuckle pain after writing for a while, uh, one of the best things that I would honestly say to invest in is actually a grip strengthener tool. Uh, these are readily available on Amazon. My favorite one, which Brittany will show a picture of, is actually one that has individual springs for all four of your fingers, um, not including your thumb, um, because it allows you to work on your overall grip strength of all of the fingers together, as well as individual grip between your thumb and all of your other fingers, which is very important for you people who are typing all day. And it's important to strengthen these muscles because a lot of the muscles that go to your fingers and your wrist and your hand actually come from your forearm. Um, so it will be important to make sure that all of that remains strong and has the endurance to last for an eight hour writing session. One other exercise you can do for your hands uh, is actually what we call tendon gliding exercises. Now this kind of just makes sure that you uh, move your fingers uh, through their whole range of motion, uh, which can be a fairly good stretch. So what you wanna start with is your hand just nice and straight, and then you start to kind of form a claw. Think of like a bear claw. And then after that, then you kind of really curl your knuckles as much as you can to make a really tight fist, okay? And then you can make like a sideways L shape here and then make it straight like that. So not a curled fist, but with the fingers straight like that. And then slowly curl back up into a nice tight bear claw and then extend all the way there. And if you do that, it's just nice and slow about 10 times. That can be a nice way to get some exercise for your hands. Whether you're experiencing back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, or uh, hand pain, uh, with all of these, you just want to monitor how much time it actually takes for that pain to come on. So if it takes half an hour or 45 minutes before you start to experience that pain, that's your body saying that's its limit for right now until you get those muscles stronger. So what I would do is set a timer for yourself and before you even hit that time, get up, move around, stretch, get a glass of water, um, all of that is going to help prevent the pain from coming on. Well guys, we hope this helps you reevaluate your writing space and gives you some good exercises to use while you write all the words for NaNoWriMo. Don't forget to check out Ben's channel linked below for other videos on physical wellness and make sure you subscribe to this channel and check out one of these videos for more NaNoWriMo and writerly tips. Oops, uh, hi. Uh, I actually, I'm a real boy. <laughs> Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this, uh, but there's only one right way. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid
phone keeps buzzing. Why don't you turn it on silent? I tap it on silent and it's on vibrate. Here, I'll put it on airplane. <laughs> See, when I put mine on silent, it doesn't vibrate. Well, I like... Or it actually does it. Yeah. It